Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will be learning how to create a simple water tracker application using JavaScript. It is going to be a simple project. But yes, guys, it is going to be really helpful for you to add it in your portfolio as a JavaScript developer. In this video, you will be learning how to create a simple water tra tracker application without a database in a single web page in a single line of code we can say a simple one but it, the video is going to be a bit lengthy as because i will be explaining you every single line of code single word of code in detail so it will be really helpful for you all guys to do learn in deep how can you actually create it so without wasting any more time let's jump right into the video but before that there's one important notice that I wanted to tell you is that about JavaScript project from beginners to advanced. I'm also going to be bringing the short videos on them. For an example, till now we have actually completed, I think so three or four JavaScript projects. So for all of them and for the coming ones, I'll be creating a short video in one minute. I will be explaining you every single line of code in detail and how you can actually create it. So for watching my short videos of JavaScript projects from beginners to advanced, do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and press the notification bell soon. Tomorrow, I will be launching up my JavaScript project from beginners to advanced short videos for in one minute. Alright guys, so let's jump into the video and as you can see right over here, my code editor, we are not going to be actually working with the CSS file first. First, we will be writing our HTML code and then we are going to be writing our JavaScript code. Uh, once our HTML and JavaScript functionality is added, our application is working fine. After that, I will be adding the CSS code to make it look beautiful. Alright, so over here, I do have a simple HTML syntax. As you can see, now I'm going to be removing this heading that was just an example of the application that I will be creating today. The first thing that I'm going to do over here is that I'll be creating a div with a class of container. In this div, I'll be having a heading for my application. It will be water tracking app. And after my heading, I'll be having a div with a class of input container. So what I'm going to do over here, as you can see, I created a separate div for my input container in which I'll be entering the number of ML waters I have drank now. And then after this, I'll be creating a div with a class of summary in which I'll be displaying the current summary. How many water intake I have taken means I'll be adding all of the water that I have drank today and I'll be displaying it in my summary div. After this summary div, I'll be creating another div which is going to be having a class of history. It will be displaying all of the history. For an example, if I drank 250 ml water, I will be entering it in my input. I'll press enter. It will be stored in my history with the time I drank that water and the total summary, total ml of water I have drank today will be displayed inside this div. It's that simple. So first let's work with our input container. In this we are going to be creating a label that is going to be for an amount. And I will display enter amount of water in ML. Simple. After this label, I will be creating another div inside my input container that is going to be for grouping our input and our add button. So I'll just name it as input group. It's that simple. In this, I'll be creating an input which is going to be having a type of number. And the ID is going to be amount of water I've drank. And the placeholder is going to take enter amount just for a hint. And after that, I'll be having a simple button. In this button, I will call it as add. And I'll just close my button tag. It's simple. So as you can see now, my input container div is ready in which I'm having my input, a label and an add button for adding the ML of water that I have drank today. So now inside the summary div, what I'm going to do over here is that I'll be having an H2 tag, which is going to display today's water intake. And inside this h2 tag only, I will be having a span tag 
in which I'll be fetching the code from the JavaScript and displaying the total ML over here. So this span tag is going to be having a ID of total amount of water I've drank. By default, I will set it to zero. It's that simple. Our summary div is also ready. Now let's come to our class history div in which I'll be creating a heading in that is going to name that I will be actually naming it as water intake history is that simple intake mm, history and after that I will create a ul tag to display the history we'll be displaying it in a list of items so for that we're going to take ul tag over here and I'll pass an id to my ul unordered list and I'll name it the id as history hyphen list simple and the list will be created in our JavaScript code. So now our HTML is finalized. So now we have finished working with our HTML. It's that simple. You have understood we created a separate day for our input, a day for our summary and a day for our history. So now let's work on JavaScript code. Let's keep the CSS code on site for now. So in the JavaScript code, the first thing that we need to do over here is that we need to select our elements by their ID. So first thing that I'll do over here is that I'll be creating a variable is going to be named as total water intake by default. The value is going to be set to zero, right? And now let me select my history list. As you can see over here in my HTML code, now I'll be selecting my history list ID and I'll be selecting my total ID to display the details. So for doing that, I'm going to be using the help of const and now I'll name the variable that is going to be history list that equals to document dot get element ID and the ID name I will be entering inside between the single course that is history hyphen list. Same thing I will be repeating for my total. So I'll just copy and paste and the variable name will be changed to total element and document dot get element by ID and the ID is total. It's that simple. Now let's create the function to make our code work, right? So the first function we are going to create, it is going to be named as add water. And after that, we're going to create one more function that is going to be named as get current time. So the function named as add water will help us to add the water intake that the user have entered in our enter amount input into our and store it in our history list and our total element and get current time will be displaying the time the user have actually added that water. The user have actually intake that water will be displayed with the help of the get current time function. So first let's come and let's finish working with our get current time function over here. We are going to create a first variable const naming it as now and we are going to be using the date method over here to save our time. I have actually stored the date method inside a now variable. Now I'll be creating another variable that is going to be for fetching the hours. I will be using the help of string method. I'll select my now that means my date method dot. I will be getting the hours. It's that simple. After that, I will be using the help of pad start and I'll just define two in between these single quotes zero. Same thing I will be doing with minutes. So I'm going to copy and paste it again and I'll name the variable as minutes string dot now dot get minutes. It's going to be same two by zero and now let's return it. So returning it, we are going to be using the help of return method with the beautiful backticks over here. We'll be using dollar, a curly braces. And now I'll call the variable name that is hours. Same thing I'll be doing with minutes with the help of semicolon. I'll be adding a semicolon over here and dollar curly braces and I'll call my minutes variable. So now whenever I'm going to be calling my get current time function, it will be returning me the current hour with this beautiful symbol current minute simple so now we have finished working with our get current time function and our app looks good so now let's work with our add water function so what we actually need to do over here is that we're going to create a variable that is going to be 
named as an amount and we are going to be parsing the interior so parse integer so now what we need is we need to get the amount that the user have entered inside the input so we are going to be using our parse integer method over here and then document dot get element by id in between the single quotes i'll be selecting the id that i have provided to my input that is amount and now I will get the value that the user have entered in between this input. It's that simple. Now I am selecting the value that the user is entering inside this input. As you can see, if I enter a value that will be selected and stored in a amount variable. When I just click on the add function, I'm going to call my add water function. It is going to get the value from the input and it will be storing that value inside the amount variable. Now what we need, what we are going to do is we are going to run an if loop for a simple validation of our, of our application to make it look more professional, to make it look more advanced level. So we are going to be using if loop over here. If is none, we are going to be using a parenthesis and we are going to select our amount variable. That means we are selecting our input. If our input is null or if our amount variable is less than or equals to zero and the user is trying to add that a water intake we're going to show an error as an alert and will display please enter a valid amount and now i'll be returning this simple so this is a simple validation that i have entered into my enter amount input now now I'll be selecting my total water variable that I have created above and I'll be adding my amount input value that the user have entered, right? It's that simple. And now I'll be selecting my total element. That means the total where I'm going to display the total water intake. I'll be selecting that element, the variable that in which I'm storing it. As you can see over here, I'm going to be selecting it and I'll be changing the text content of it to the total water after the user have entered the new amount so i will explain you in detail once again what i am doing over here i selected my total water variable plus equal to what i'm saying is that now change the value of this total water to the value the user have entered in my amount this is my input all right so what the user have entered in my input after that, what I need to do over here is that I need to change the value in between inside my actually water intake. So what I'm selecting over here is that I'm selecting my total element and I'm saying them to change the text content of it to the total water. The total water means the value that I have stored inside this variable, right? It's that simple. So now let's display the history of our water intake. So for doing that, I'll be creating a variable naming it as list items document dot create an element. So first what we are going to do is we're going to create a list tag. So for creating that list tag, I stored that creating a li tag code inside a list item variable, which will be helping us to save our time and make our code look more clean. So now I'll be selecting my list item variable dot. I'll be having a text content that equals to the first thing that I need to display in between this li tags is the date and time. So for displaying that, I'll be using the back ticks over here, dollar curly braces, and I'll be calling my get current time function over here, which will display all of the date. And after that, I will be adding a dash and to display the amount of water intake the user have added i'll be using dollar curly braces and now i'll be calling the amount variable that i've created above and after that i'll just display simple ml perfect now i'll be selecting my history list that i have created above as you can see over here i will be selecting my history list dot i will append it a child and that is going to be my list item variable to display it in front end perfect and now we are going to be using the document dot get element by id method over here in which i will be selecting my amount 
that means I'm actually selecting the amount over here. And what I'm going to do over here now, I'll be set its value back to null. Simple. So I'll explain you this line of code once again, what is happening over here. Once the user enters the amount of water intake the user has taken, once the user clicks on add, it will be added in our water intake history and the total water intake will be displayed over here. After that, I'll be setting the value of the input back to null, back to empty. So for that, I'm selecting my amount input. I'm setting its value back to an empty strings. It's that simple. So now let's try whether our application is working fine or not. Let's refresh. For example, first I have taken a 550 ml of water I've drank. Let's click on add. As you can see, it is not working because still now we haven't called our add water function. So let's switch back to our HTML file and let's come to our add button. And now once the user clicks on the button, we are going to call a function and that is going to be named as add water, add water, simple. Now let's come, let's refresh our app. Let's say I have drank 550 ml of water. Let's place on enter. Oh, beautiful. So we are getting some error. So it's fun to fix this error. Let's see what's the error function get current time is having an error over here. So let's see, let's come to our script.js code over here. And now, now dot get minutes string. We are calling new date method over here. So function get current time, we call this and this. So why it is displaying me in a code over here? What's the actually issues happening? Let's see. Okay, okay, okay. So as you can see over here inside my list item when I just provided it a text content to display the current time and the amount of water that I have added, I just called my function without the parenthesis. So I just need to call my parenthesis. Perfect. Let's refresh our app. Let's add I have drank 550 ml of water. Let's press enter. And as you can see, the water intake history is displaying my current time that is 1333 with the water that I have intaked right now it's 550 ml and the total water intake is being displayed over here and it's changed our value from 0 to 550. Let's see whether it's adding or not. So now after that I drank 500 ml of water not 200 500 ml of water. Let's click on add and as you can see it's added in my history. First, I drank 550 ml of water at 13.33. After that, I drank 500 ml of water at 13.34. And the total water intake that I've taken today is 1050 ml of water I have drank today. Perfect. Our application is working fine. So now, to make the application look beautiful, we are going to be adding some CSS code to make it look more clean, more attractive. But if you don't want to see that, you can skip this part. You have already learned how you can add the functionality. But do not forget to like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So it's going to be simple as we are not going to go with the multi line of code to make this video more lengthy. I'll be saving your time. I have already prepared the CSS code as you can see over here. I'm going to be copying that and I'll be pasting into my CSS file. Perfect. Boom. It's ready. So as you can see now, our water tracking application is looking beautiful, amazing and attractive. So let's test this application after adding a CSS file. <coughs> as you can see, it's working fine. Now it's looking beautiful because we have added some color to our bullets. We have added some 
under lines below our headings we have just changed our button color we have changed our heading color we provided our main container some box shadow so now our app is looking amazing and beautiful so if you like this video please do not forget to subscribe to my youtube channel and press the notification bell for more amazing videos like this and the short video on javascript projects from beginners to advanced all right guys i will see you in the next video till then peace